Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said Wednesday that North Korean troops wearing Russian uniforms and carrying Russian equipment are moving to the Kursk region near Ukraine, in what he called a dangerous and destabilizing move. Austin was speaking at a press conference with South Korean Defense Minister Kim Yong-hyun, as concerns grow about Pyongyang's deployment of as many as 11,000 troops to Russia. He said officials are discussing what to do about the deployment. Austin said the U.S. remains concerned that Russia will use the North Korean troops in combat, but whether they will be employed in the fight is yet to be seen. Kim said he doesn't necessarily believe the deployment will trigger war on the peninsula, but could increase security threats between the two nations. There is a high possibility that Pyongyang would ask for higher technologies in exchange for its troop deployment, such as in nuclear and ballistic missile capabilities, he said, speaking through an interpreter. Seoul and its allies assess that the number of North Korean troops now dispatched in Russia has increased to 11,000, according to a senior South Korean presidential official, who spoke on condition of anonymity during a background briefing. More than 3,000 of them are believed to have moved toward combat zones in western Russia, the official said, without specifying the locations. Some North Korean advance units of those troops have already arrived in Kursk, where Ukraine has successfully held territory after a surprise counter-incursion in August. Good afternoon, and thank you for being here today, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to introduce... Now, we're closely tracking the unprecedented level of direct military cooperation between Russia and the DPRK. In our meetings today, we shared de our deep concerns about the deployment of DPRK troops to Russia. We also discuss how we're going to work together with our allies and partners to respond to this dangerous and destabilizing escalation. The evidence now suggests that North Korea has sent around 10,000 soldiers to train in eastern Russia. And some of these DPRK troops have already moved closer to Ukraine. And we're seeing them outfitted with Russian uniforms and provided with Russian equipment. And I am increasingly concerned that the Kremlin plans to use these North Korean soldiers to support Russia's combat operations in, in Russia's Kursk region near the border with Ukraine. And let me rem remind you that Russia signed onto the UN Security Council resolutions agreeing not to provide military assistance to North Korea. Of course, we know that Putin has gone tin cupping to get weapons from the DPRK and Iran. Turning to a pariah state like North Korea for troops just underscores how much trouble he is in. And we take this very seriously. We urge the Kremlin to change course. And we fully understand the security implications for both Europe and the Indo-Pacific. Putin will not prevail in Ukraine, even with, with more help from North Korea. Thank you. Finland's president said North Korea's dispatch of troops to Russia represents an escalation of the Russia-Ukraine war that goes against China's own stated position on the conflict, following talks Tuesday with the Chinese president. Alexander Stubb made his comments after meeting for more than three hours with China's President Xi Jinping in Beijing in a visit to discuss the war as well as trade and other issues. Chinese officials did not comment on specifics, but Chinese state media said the two sides had an in-depth exchange. North Korean activity right now, both in terms of arms exports and especially in terms of sending troops to Russia is escalation, expansion and provocation, Stubb said. The U.S. government on Monday said that North Korea has sent 10,000 troops to Russia where they are believed to be headed for the Kursk border region where Ukrainian troops have seized Russian territory. Stubb said that deployment defies China's position that there should be no escalation, no expansion and no provocation on the battlefield. China and Brazil issued a joint peace plan earlier this year that calls for no expansion of the battlefield. The Finnish leader also said that China should continue its efforts in pushing for peace in Ukraine, and that the starting point should be Ukraine's peace plan. 
He also expressed concerns that Russian President Vladimir Putin could deploy nuclear weapons in the course of war. It's extremely important that a major power such as China keeps on having dialogue with Russia and make sure that we can de-escalate as much as possible," Stubbs said. Xi, for his part, expressed China's willingness to work with all parties concerned, including Finland, to continue to play an active role in promoting a peaceful resolution of the crisis, according to state CCTV. Stubb and Xi previously had met 14 years ago, the Chinese leader noted in his welcome remarks before their meeting. They had met when Stubb was Finland's foreign minister and she was China's vice president. North Korean activity right now, both in terms of arms exports and especially in terms of sending troops to China is, sorry, to Russia, is escalation, expansion and provocation. Uh, so we had a good discussion uh, about this. My own analysis is, this is my analysis, not the words of the president, is that for China, the Chinese-North Korean relationship is not very comfortable at the moment. Uh, because as a matter of fact, it can lead to escalation. China's relationship with Russia, I respect the autonomy of both sides, has a direct effect on China's relationship with Europe. So if we feel that Russia's aggressivity in Ukraine is a threat to us, then it has ramifications for anyone who directly or indirectly uh, supports uh, Russia. The final and fifth point uh, I made is that it is very difficult to trust President Putin, especially when it comes to nuclear weapons. Uh, and that's why it's extremely important that a major power uh, such as China uh, keeps on having dialogue with Russia and make sure that we can de-escalate as much as possible. Chinese-Russian relations has an impact on Chinese-European relations. And for China, the biggest internal market in the world is the European Union. So my worry is that we're going into a cycle of tariffs, of trade escalation, etc., etc. We need to avoid that. We need to have a level playing field. Um, and, and this is the ongoing negotiation.